what is your personal religion or do you is there any type of god to you like is there a purpose given that we're just sitting on this speck in the middle of this sea of stars humans have created a mythological framework that has always involved some kind of often involves some kind of higher spiritual powers and as every human culture has done as that goes away as we know more and more that and it seems harder and harder to prove that anything might exist like that where does that leave us on our own which to my mind is much more responsible than hoping that someone will, will save us from <laughs> ourselves so we don't have to make our best efforts to do it ourselves and if we're wrong and there is someone who steps in and saves us okay that's all right <laughs> i'm for that but we you know hedged our bets it's Pascal's bargain run backwards. Um, I'll, I'll say another word. The word God covers an enormous range of different ideas. And you recognize that in the yes. way you phrase the question. <laughs> Running from an outsized, light-skinned male with a long white beard sitting in a throne in the sky and tallying the fall of every sparrow for which there is no evidence. To my mind, if anybody has some, I sure would like to see it. Um, <clears throat> to uh, the kind of God that Einstein or Spinoza talked about, which is very close to the sum total of the laws of the universe. Now, it would be crazy to deny that there are laws in the universe. And if that's what you want to call God, then of course God exists. Mm -hmm. And there are all sorts of other nuances. There is, for example, the deist God that many of the founding fathers of this country believed in, although it is a secret whose name may not be spoken in some circles, a, uh, a roi fainéant, a do-nothing king, the god who creates the universe and then retires, and to whom <coughs> praying to is sort of pointless. He's not here. He went somewhere else. He had other things to do. Now, that's also a God. So, when you say, do you believe in God? If I, I say yes or if I say no, you have learned absolutely nothing. I guess I'm asking you to define yours if you have one. But why would we use a word so ambiguous that means so many different things? It gives you freedom to well, define it. As it you gives choose. you freedom to <clears throat> seem to agree with someone else with whom you do not agree. It covers over differences. It makes for social lubrication, but it is not an aid to truth, in my view. And therefore, I think we need much sharper language when we ask these questions. I think the essence of the, the scientific method is the willingness to, uh, to admit you're wrong, the willingness to abandon uh, ideas that don't work, uh, and the essence of uh, religion is not to change uh, anything. The supposed truths are handed down by uh, some revered figure, and then no one is supposed to make any, uh, any progress beyond that because all the truth is thought to be in hand. My sense is that the scientific way of, of thinking, questioning, uh, some delicate mix of uh, creative encouragement of new ideas, and the most rigorous and skeptical scrutiny of new and old ideas, uh, I think that is the path to the future, not just for science, but uh, for all human institutions. We have to be willing to challenge because we are in desperate need of change. What is faith? It is belief in the absence of evidence. Now, I don't propose to tell anybody what to believe, but for me, believing when there's no compelling evidence is a mistake. The idea is to withhold belief until there is compelling evidence. And if the universe does not comply with our predispositions, okay, then we have the wrenching obligation to accommodate to the way the universe but I think really you could, is. You, I mean, but I mean, you, so you step forward to say, I deny all religion because I can't see no, it no, no, scientifically? No, no, no. You see, the value it, of religious it, it, experience it, it, and the value of, 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 of reaching for higher experiences. Let me say. Religion deals with history, with poetry, with great literature, with ethics, with morals, 
including the morality of uh, treating compassionately the least fortunate among us. All of these are things that I endorse wholeheartedly. Where religion gets into trouble is in those cases that it pretends to know something about science. The science in the Bible, for example, was acquired by the Jews from the Babylonians during the Babylonian captivity of 600 BC. That was the best science on the planet then. But we've learned something since then. Roman Catholicism, uh, Reformed Judaism, most of the mainstream Protestant denominations have no difficulty with uh, the idea that humans have evolved from other creatures, that uh, the Earth is 4.6 billion years old, with the Big Bang. They don't have any trouble with that. The trouble comes with people who are biblical literalists, right. who believe that the Bible is dictated by the creator of the universe to an unerring stenographer. And so, therefore, they... And, and has no metaphor or allegory. And from it. there, they make their political and economic choices uh, and social and, choices. And scientific. And scientific choices. And scientific. And that's part of your problem with that idea. Exactly. It is that because for the wrong reasons, we make the wrong choices about science. That's right. So who is more humble? The scientist who looks at the universe with an open mind and accepts whatever the universe has to teach us, or somebody who says everything in this book must be considered the literal truth and never mind the fallibility of all the human beings involved in the writing of this book. There are still those in science who say the exquisite nature of the universe, the exquisite laws of the universe, are evidence of, of a designer, of a creator. Mm -hmm. Does that view make sense to you? It's very tempting. I mean, we want to be thought of as children being cared for by an omnipotent, omniscient, and benevolent creator. I mean, think of all the uncertainties and turmoil and terrors of our life, which would be made less terrifying if this were true. But here, if anywhere, is a case where we must not believe because we want it to be true. Now, if you take a look at Darwin, you see a case where it was so tempting to say, I find a watch. It requires a watchmaker. Watches do not spontaneously self-assemble. And now I find a, an acorn, or a squid, or a bacterium. It is much more intricately and exquisitely put together than a watch. Here too there must have been a creator. It's very natural. But what Darwin pointed out is that there is a perfectly reasonable process, which is inevitable which will create enormous, exquisite order out of chaos, given enough time. If we thought the universe was only 6,000 years old, there is not enough time, and evolution is nonsense. But if, as in fact is now definitively true, the solar system and the Earth are four and a half billion years old, billion years old, then there's plenty of time for evolution, and our sense that order means creator is wrong. Finally, you can say, look, you can go back as far as you want, but somehow the stuff of the universe had to come from somewhere, and isn't that what God did? But that's only true if the universe was created. If the universe was always here, if the universe was infinitely old, then there's nothing for a creator to do. Most of us would be surprised to hear that the universe is going to end one day. We expect the universe to go on forever into the future. Why do we have the idea that it doesn't go on forever into the past? I'm not saying I know the answer to this. This is one of the deepest questions. We do not know the answer. We simply have to keep an open mind. All of us, philosophers, scientists, religious people, no one in fact knows. The general picture, however, of a Big Bang followed by an expanding universe is correct. What happened before that? Was the universe devoid of all matter, and then the matter suddenly, somehow, created? How did that happen? In many cultures, the customary answer is that a god 
God created the universe out of nothing. But if we wish to pursue this question courageously, we must, of course, ask the next question. Where did God come from? If we decide that this is an unanswerable question, why not save a step and conclude that the origin of the universe is an unanswerable question? Or, if we say that God always existed, why not save a step and conclude that the universe always existed, that there's no need for a creation, it was always here. These are not easy questions. Cosmology brings us face to face with the deepest mysteries, with questions that were once treated only in religion and myth.